Okay, we're just waiting for the live stream to... This part always baffles me. There we go, here's the thing. Okay. What? Okay, anyway, sorry about that. It's, uh, this is what happens when you don't know what you're doing. So anyway, welcome to the uh, Mass Bay RE third Thursday online meeting for uh, October 15th. Uh, uh, we're still getting comfortable with the Zoom webinar format, so things might always not always be smooth, as you've just witnessed. But basically, uh, here's how it'll work uh, for all you who, of you who are attending. Throughout the presentation, you can chat by text with other participants, either collectively or individually by opening up the chat window at the bottom of your screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can also open the Q&A window, allowing you to ask questions to the host and panelists. We'll try to either reply back to you via text in the Q&A window or answer your question live. We'll probably hold most of the questions till the end of uh, Dan's program. To ask a question, type your question into the Q&A box and click send. Check send anonymously if you don't want your name to be attached to the question in your Q&A. We'll do our best to respond to questions, but as I said, we'll probably hold them till the end. At the end of the Dan's formal program and any questions, we'll turn off the recording and the Facebook live stream. At that point, if you'd like to stick around and chat with us in the standard Zoom meeting format, you're welcome to do so. Just give us a few minutes to invite everybody into the meeting. We have to go through the participant list one by one. And if most of you stick around, that's going to be a fair number of people. We're going to try to wrap up the whole evening by about 10 o'clock. Uh, some announcements uh, before we get started. Uh, first of all, for those of you who may not have heard, uh, former Trains and Classic Trains editor Dave Ingalls died on October 4th. Uh, Dave was known to many of our members not only through his work at Kalmbach, but through his rail travels nationwide. He was a fixture in the rail fan community for many years and will be sorely missed by all who knew him. Our condolences go out to his daughter Susie and his personal and professional families. Um, upcoming meetings. Uh, our uh, next meeting will be our uh, first Tuesday members night on Tuesday, November 10th, because there's uh, some sort of weird election going on on um, November 3rd. So the first Tuesday is actually the second Tuesday. We'll be looking uh, for short programs, five to 15 minutes uh, that people would like to share. It can be any topic at all. If you have something you'd like to share with us for First Tuesday, uh, please contact me by email and we'll uh, get you on the program. Our third Thursday in November is November 19th. It'll be our annual meeting and election of officers. will be done first with a virtual meeting starting at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we'll be sending a Zoom invitation out to all of our members. Our members will not need to pre-register to join that uh, Zoom call. Um, hopefully we won't hit the 100 person threshold. All voting for the uh, uh, officers and directors will be uh, conducted by proxy in advance, either uh, online or there will be a paper proxy ballot in the November call boy, which will probably go out around the end of the month. Um, our meeting program will start at 8 o'clock or shortly thereafter. We'll be doing that much the way we did tonight, except hopefully it'll get started more smoothly. Um, Gene Fox will be giving us an update on the South Coast Rail Project. Uh, phase one construction is in full swing right now, so there should be uh, some interesting things to see and hear about. Uh, Thursday, December 17th is our classic railroad film series, uh, the movie Danger Lights. Uh, which actually I found out today is one of the first widescreen movies ever made by Hollywood. Unfortunately, they only made two 65 millimeter prints and only showed in a couple cities and those prints are lost. Uh, <clears throat> regarding our excursion program, I'm pleased to let you know that the uh, Lockmere Limited excursion on October 31st is a definite go. We have uh, met the thresholds that we needed to meet. Um, and so we do have coach seats available, a fairly limited number, uh, but they are still available. There is an order form in the October call boy, which hopefully is arriving in your mailboxes anytime soon. Um, uh, 
orders will be, advanced sales will be conducted through uh, uh, Sunday, October 25th, and at that point we'll shut off advanced sales. There might be some walk-up sales available depending on what's left. Um, as for steam in the snow, we're hoping to run it on uh, Saturday, January 2nd, 2021. Um, we're, at this point, we're awaiting a final proposal from the Conway Scenic. Uh, one last thing I'd just like to mention, for those of you who have received the October call boy and read the caption on the um, picture on the front cover, um, yes, we, I know now that that building in the center is uh, not the New England Life building. It's in fact the Suffolk County Courthouse. So three people have already pointed out that, that out to me and there will probably be dozens more. So uh, we know about it. Thank you very much. Uh, so anyway, moving on to tonight's program. Um, uh, many of us were disappointed when the weekend of rare excursions uh, planned for this summer in the Buffalo area was canceled due to the COVID-19 travel restrictions. So tonight we're pleased to welcome Dan Howard with his presentation on the short lines of Western New York. Uh, retired from a career in civil engineering, Dan Howard keeps busy by volunteering as a conductor with the Bercher Scenic, as a dispatcher motorman and conductor at the Seashore Trolley Museum, and serving as president of the West Shore Model Railroad Club. An avid rail enthusiast and photojournalist, Dan's photographs and articles have appeared in Rail Fan and Railroad, Trains Magazine, Rail Pace, Passenger Train Journal, and many other publications, including our own Callboy. So Dan, let me uh, turn things over to you and uh, take it away. Hey Dave, could you mute everybody except yourself and Dan, please? I think everybody is. Ready. I'm going to start the slideshow here. Oh, I muted Dan. There. Now you can hear me. No, that's better. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dave. Uh, and as we discussed, uh, Dave, jump in. I do have a few videos along the way, and if they're really choppy, we can uh, just skip over those. Uh, we started, I started putting together some pictures of Western New York and didn't quite have enough for the show, so we're gonna call this New York Short Lines and more. So we are gonna start on the Falls Road, Friday, November 5th, 2010, Train LB1 was run as a mixed train. And as much as an excursion for enthusiasts, this was a midweek. It was actually a, uh, a benefit to help a local shortline railroader who had some very high medical bills. And this trip actually raised about $7,000 for his family, which was really good. So we ran from Lockport to Brockport. And here we are at the first photo run by spot. They set it up with the, the folks there. They called it Botanical Garden. And the, uh, the, the neighbors there came out. They actually uh, came out and visited with us as they did the run by. Power, uh, RS-11-1802 is a former nickel plate unit. And 2025, I believe, was the uh, RS-32 on home rails. It's a former New York Central unit, and it's a former New York Central line. Coaches came out of the uh, Western New York Railway Historical Society, New York Central Bud Coaches. They tacked them on at the end of the train. Kind of a gloomy day, but you know, you take what you can get. So here we are at Medina. And at this point we picked up three or four VIPs, including uh, President David Monteverdi of GVT, which is the owner of the Falls Road. And they also, uh, they brought the pizzas on at that location for our lunch, but they forgot the, pl the plates. So the GBT cops had to catch up with us at Brockport with the plates. We had another run by along the way. This was at uh, in, uh, mile post 23 east of Albion. Yeah, mile post 23. There's also some switching move there at Holly Cold Storage. So 
So moving on to Brockport, I grabbed a, a picture off of the uh, satellite view of Google. Off to the left is off towards uh, the west, towards Lockport. So you're coming in and there's a siding, and there's a crossing and a couple stub ends and a couple of uh, businesses here. It's uh, quite an interesting little switching operation at the end of the line. So they pulled the power off and we're gonna do some switching here at the end. Twenty thirty-five. my bad. They went down into the cold storage, grab a couple of reefers, bring them out, get some nice alco smoke there. All right, we're going to try our first video here. Looks good. Alrighty. Oops. So here's a close up for those like the builder's plates. The uh, RS32 is from June of 1962. And we moved down to Malpost 37 in Knowlesville. Beautiful downpour. <laughs> They pulled four cars and uh, spotted two at Gromar. And they did a run by for us. So we're back to Medina. We showed the uh, depot earlier. Here's the freight depot. And there's Mr. Monteverdi uh, stepping off the train. We let the VIPs go at that point. Then we went down the fourth and final run by was down at the Spring Street Crossing right near Lockport. We get back to Lockport, there was some switching needed to be done. So here's a coming and going shot of the power coming by the cars. And wrap things up at the end of the day there. So next we're gonna to go to the New York and Lake Erie Railroad. So over here on the left, this green circle, we're looking at an old Erie map. Buffalo is right near the top of the circle here. And here's the line coming down here. Now on the right is from the NYLE page showing what's their line now and our trip going to be uh, Saturday of Memorial Day weekend 2016 between Gowanda and South Dayton. They ran a couple trips. Uh, my friend and I rode the first one and then we scooted down to South Dayton to get some pictures and video of the second train coming in. So we're going to start in Gowanda and the big building here is the, uh, the engine house but the, the real picture here is this red former Erie section house. And a couple of their S units. Okay. 
And the stars of their show are the, uh, the FPAs. The old depot in Gowanda where we boarded. Now we're down at South Dayton. Uh, on the first trip, they're doing the runaround move to get the power on the north side to take us back. And we're back to Gowanda. And like I said, we ran down to South Dayton. And yes, you heard that clicking in the background. That was the camera going off. My friend calls it my machine gun camera. All right, so the very next day, we made a good weekend out of it. Went down to the arcade in Attica. So we board an arcade, you run up to couriers of the layover. Their connection to the outside world is with the Buffalo and Pittsburgh Railroad, Genesee and Wyoming property. So just reference, this is a New York DOT rail map. You got Buffalo in the top left. So we're down in Arcade. They bring the power out of the house and bring it down and put it on the end of the train. We're all boarded up just about, and last folks are getting on the board for the crew, and away we'll go. I think they got a really good special on orange paint a couple of years before we were there. So we're looking back, that's the depot back there. We're on the tail end of the train, heading north. And they got a display train as you make your way out of town. I believe this is their locomotive that's not in service. And up the hill we go. She's got a nice bark to her. And it's not too long before you're out in the farm fields. Really pretty country out there. Uh, Dan, somebody's asking what the total length of the run on the arcade in Attica was. Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, I need to look that one up. <laughs> okay. When you I think they were asking it of the... It up, it was the New York and Lake Erie they wanted to know. Oh, the, the arcade in Attica too, Doug. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll have to dig those up and I might not get them right away. But I, I, I'll, I'll dig it out. We did have uh, musicians on board. Yeah, my mileage. 
So I had some nice music on board to uh, while away the time. Another shot down the line. And then we arrive in Couriers. Uh, Arcade in Attica, 7.16 miles in one direction. And New York and Lake Erie from Gowanda to South Dayton is 9.9 .9 miles. Yeah, some uh, display items, interesting display items down at, up at Couriers. They bring the power off and uh, the families can, can come through the cab. It was a blistering hot day and uh, I, my friend and I chose to pass. <laughs> Seen enough of them. Got a speeder inside the station. Dan, did you check share your computer audio when you started? Are you getting no audio? Yeah, we're not. Huh. They're uh, missing at the top of share options. Maybe you'll allow you to turn it on now. Okay, Stan, share computer sound. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Wish I had known that sooner. We'll, uh, well, we'll play this out and then we'll run it again for you. Sound now? Yes. on the south end of the train, take us back to Arcade. So there was only one trip that day, so uh, we, we bailed off the train quick and got around so we get some shots of when they put the power away. Nice high rail Grumman in the back there. All righty, so on the morning before we rode the New York and Lake Erie, we went down to Hamburg where there's some uh, equipment stored there. We're just south of Buffalo. It's the long line of the Buffalo Southern, which is a former Erie Railroad line. Interesting. Items there. There's also two depots there, one one newer than the other, and a former Amtrak car. I'm not sure what the original heritage of that is. This is a 180 degree from the last shot. Now going down the line, we'll take a little closer look. This is uh, privately owned equipment that's parked along the line. 
separate from the historical society program. Uh, Jordan spreader here, number of S units. I believe it's originally Lehigh Valley. The lines look right on that. Don't don't quote me. Now this is owned by the uh, Western New York Railway, uh, Her uh, excuse me, Railway Historical Society, and this is operational. It's an Alco Alco High Hood 660, and uh, they do have it running. And an older Erie Depot, about a block south of the other one. It's a hobby shop in there, mostly uh, Lionel stuff. And behind the depot is notes here somewhere. I think it's a I1S class. Decapod, one of the last ones, if not the last one. Um, this is the class. Shaughnessy got some pictures of this class, like going through the Finger Lakes area and stuff like that. And for some reason, I didn't get a picture, but down at the left end, that's a nickel plate caboose. It's also owned by the Historical Society. Made a couple visits to the Lakeshore Railway Museum. It's in North, the town of Northeast Pennsylvania. So looking at the bigger map, there's a little piece, for those that may or may not be familiar, there's a little piece of Pennsylvania that's on Lake Erie. Buffalo is just a few miles up the road here, and Cleveland is down off the lower left side. And running through here, you have both Norfolk Southern, which is the former nickel plate line, and you have CSX, which is the former New York Central, Lakeshore, Michigan, and Southern line. Uh, the Lakeshore Limited runs on the CSX line. Now with a blow up here of Northeast, the Lakeshore Railway Museum is in a corner of town here. You can see the CSX tracks and the Norfolk Southern tracks here in town. Here's a beautiful uh, Lakeshore, Michigan, Southern Depot. Beautifully restored. And being so close to Erie, uh, the, one of the primary parts of their collection is, is GE equipment. And here is the first New York Central U25B. Transfer caboose. Crossing tower in the background. This is a ooh, 132 ton, I believe. Yeah, 132 ton center cab, originally owned by Ford, and it was designed as such to kind of look like a Ford. And for the New York Central fans out there, uh, I don't know if it was this one specifically, but one of these units was uh, used by the company that scrapped the putt, the putt version. This is Erie Dock number seven. It's an electrically powered third rail for ore car shunting on the docks of the Great Lakes. That blue critter is uh, one of the earliest GE box cap diesel locomotives. I do not have the specifics on it. And actually their website didn't either, which is kind of surprising. Uh, folks who've made the pilgrimage to West Springfield might be familiar with the top unit. That's the former uh, mass firefighters safety train locomotive. And the bottom unit, you might have heard a couple years ago, 
CSX actually repainted that locomotive for donating to the museum. They did an absolutely beautiful job. They also have a little Joe. And a friend of mine has a Plymouth switcher that he keeps at the museum. And he was there that day with me and he fired up and he took a little ride on the grounds. And there's some good rail fanning there. So we're out on the platform now watching the parade. This is a, an eastbound stack train. They have a couple of great northern passenger cars there. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the where's and why's of that, but they're, they're nice looking equipment. Here's a westbounder. Norfolk Southern's doing some work on their tracks. I think it was a local coming through doing some switching. And unlike the BNA, cab signals are not required here. And so you got foreign power coming through. I believe this was the 166, which is the CP train that comes in at Buffalo. And that one's been seeing, I've been reading lately, a lot of the, the Canadian Pacific Heritage units have been showing up on that one somewhat frequently. And here's what used to be Q090, the uh, the Veggie Express, which was uh, held earlier this year. The frozen uh, vegetables that came out of uh, the Northwest to Rotterdam Junction. And just to the left of the passenger car here, this is their connection to the outside world. And then this track goes into the museum. So after the day after my second visit to Northeast, my friend and I went down and we rode the Oil Creek in Titusville. It's October of 2018. This is the New York State Pennsylvania line. This shows that little piece of Pennsylvania along Lake Erie. Uh, this is a Pennsylvania Railroad system map from 57. So this green circle here blown up is the route from Titusville down the Oil Creek in Titusville. Now, unfortunately, on the way down that morning, I hit a deer. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. The deer ran off, the car was drivable. So we got there in time to ride the train. I just didn't get any pictures really before we got going. Heading out of town, this is their S unit. Get down the end of the line, and they were doing their run around with a M420. And uh, it was a one and done day for them. So after uh, they got the train parked, took some shots of the equipment. Every once in a while, they'll bring a, a postal employee on board and they'll still cancel some mail on board the. And they have parked the power, and we did our best to get a couple shots of it. Alrighty, so back to the weekend of Memorial Day 2016 when we did the Hamburg, New York and Lake Erie Arcade Attica. We zipped through Olean on our way in. This is on the southern tier of New York. 
This dotted line here is the Pennsylvania, New York state line. And these dark lines are the, uh, the rails of the Western New York and Pennsylvania. Who are known for running the big Alcos, although they recently purchased some former CSX six axle GE units that are slowly uh, infiltrating the road jobs. And this is right alongside the road. It's, uh, it's nice. You don't need to trespass or anything. It's uh, right there. This one's still showing its colors from the Belt Railway of Chicago. Unfortunately, it was the end of the day and none of them were running, but we did get some shots. Inside the garage, you can kind of see the outline, inside the bay, I should say. Um, that's the former D&H Bicentennial unit, which has been rehabbed. I can't remember if it's uh, Bath and Hammondsport now or LAL, which, which one of the family lines owns it, but uh, it's been rehabbed and it's back in service. So the same weekend, uh, it's Sunday of Memorial Day weekend, 2016. We're making our way back east, and we swung through Owego along the way. And Owego and Hartford Railway, you might have heard that name in the news in the last few weeks because R.J. Corman has uh, made an offer to purchase the line and, uh, and its associated lines. And they got a couple of uh, B23-7s. And down the bottom, they have an SW1200. The headquarters of the railroad are in the former Owego Lehigh Valley Depot, which they uh, did a great job restoring. Alrighty, we're gonna jump back a year, May 2015. Livonia, Avon, and Lakeville was celebrating their 50th anniversary with a few, uh, a couple of uh, rides they were running. And it was interesting, you could only get tickets through local Wegmans grocery stores. Fortunately, I had a friend that lives out there and I reached out to him and he was uh, kind enough to uh, make a purchase so my friend and I could take a ride. So we're down in Lakeville in the morning. People are queuing up to board the train. They got some wonderful Alco power. 425 is a former New Haven C425. And 420 is a former Long Island Railroad High Hood C420. And the coaches came out of the Rochester and Genesee Valley Railroad Museum, which is along the line at Rush, and we'll get there in a little bit. And these cars are from the uh, Interstate Express which very unfortunately was inaugurated on December 7th, 1941. As we're heading up the line, we had a little peek over to the uh, LA&L facility. I believe the RS1 has since been donated to the uh, museum up in Rush. They have a nice 45 tonner there as well. We get up to the top end of the line. You can uh, see some of that eerie heritage with the milepost from Jersey City. And the track section marker. So 
So like the uh, New York and Lake Erie, we rode the first train and caught the second one at a few locations. This is the former Erie Depot in Avon. And here's the train coming north. That unit, I believe, is a former Spokane, Spokane, Portland, and Seattle. I think it's a C-424. And for all you model railroaders out there, we got, we got a trailing unit with the headlight on forward. So all you DCC guys out there that always try to, to get that to work right, and it doesn't sometimes, you know, here's a prototype. train passing through Avon. It's a nice former ramp along the side, gave us a, a nice elevated spot, to catch it coming through. We then went up to Rush, and we're at the grade crossing at the museum, and here's another video. mile run in one direction. So turning around 180 degrees in the last picture, looking north, there's the train going away from us actually. And some of the first shots at the museum. Down in the lower part of the museum, you got a former Kodak RS1, Penn Central transfer caboose, Nice uh, dispatch shops, plug door, reefer. B and O signals. Display only, I believe. And some of the equipment up top, that Fairbanks Morse unit is uh, operational. Got another Kodak center cab. A lot of these units are uh, generally local to the area. Very interesting trucks on the, uh, the power plant unit here. There, this is also the home of the uh, Hammerhead RS3. A number of different stories about this locomotive, one of which uh, David Monteverdi and his, uh, his business partners who started Genesee Valley Transportation, this locomotive was the very first locomotive they purchased, which started their rail empire. It is a converted, you can see the two cap stacks here. It's got an EMD prime mover. The, uh, High short hood is where the steam generator was. This unit was actually a former Pennsylvania Railroad unit, which then went to Lehigh Valley as part of a, a trade or purchase swap. We're gonna do a flyby of Soul Day. Uh, in my travels through work, I had the, uh, the, the ability to get in there one day. And here is Syracuse. So we're just west of Syracuse. Finger Lake Railway comes up and interchanges with CSX. This is all former New York Central Line. Um, I think one or two months ago on Rail Pace, they did an article on chasing along this line here. So they had a couple of uh, old Alco switchers in at the plant.
and Finger Lakes had a uh, B23-7 also uh, down there for their for yard switching. And while I was there, the, the road job came through. All right, we're gonna swing up to the northeast part of the state. Adirondack Scenic used to operate between Lake Placid and Saranac Lake, kind of an isolated section from their, their Utica operations. Putting things in perspective, Plattsburgh is up here, Rouse's Point on the old D&H, Montreal is up here a little ways, and the uh, Messina line is over here. Got a couple shots. My wife actually took this one. This is the train coming west into Saranac as we're waiting for our trip to Lake Placid. Beautiful New York Central Depot. I believe it's New York Central. Another shot from my wife. It's a nice fall foliage there, which is about what we're experiencing now. 6076 was actually, is a privately owned locomotive, or it was privately owned at that time. Either, uh, I believe it was on a lease to the Adirondack Scenic, the former Pennsylvania Railroad Jeep 9, and it's now down on the Northern Central. Their backup power to their uh, steam locomotive. So they brought her in, hooked her up, brake test, all that good stuff. We boarded and off we went to Lake Placid. It's a former Conrail camp car, which is used at the time by the volunteers. And pictures you can't get anymore, which is a train at Lake Placid. As uh, New York State has decided they're gonna turn this into a rail trail at this end. Here's a shot with the depot off to the left. Gonna head down a little south of there to the former now Saratoga and North Creek. The uh, former D&H line, which splits off just north of Saratoga Springs, up through Hadley, North Creek, and beyond. Uh, when we were there, uh, this will be pictures from two trips. It was part of the uh, IHP empire, which kind of blew up recently. And now there's nobody operating this line currently. So the first trip was uh, my wife and I, the day after, or one or two days after the trip between Placid and Saranac. We came down the night before to get some pictures of the train coming in. Um, 821, you'll see in a couple of different liveries. This is how it came in from the Staten Island Railway. Uh, her sister, not exact same locomotive, but her sister, 407, went down to the uh, Catskill Mountain in Phoenicia. Off to the left here is their GE, which they painted in a, in a 
kind of B and H themed livery, and just some beautiful old buildings up in North Creek. Some nice railroad architecture. So we stayed overnight up in the area to ride the train down and back because we didn't feel like doing a, a three hour layover in uh, North Creek. So as you can see, it's kind of dark out. So we enjoyed our breakfast on the southbound run and uh, I got my pictures after that. We're now down in Saratoga looking north, the station tracks here. And then you got the former DNH, the Canadian Pacific Main Line, out beyond. Had an E unit on the other end of the train. And quite a hodgepodge of equipment. You got some former Long Island Railroad by levels, you got some uh, former full length dome cars. The depot here is owned and operated by the Capital District Transportation uh, CDTA Authority, which primarily runs buses, but they also run the Saratoga Depot and they operate the Rensselaer Rail Station as well. Got to say, I had uh, a couple of opportunities to ride this train, and in their heyday, these guys did a great job. You could just see the the, the interior here with the the china and the silverware and the cloth tablecloths, and they had a kitchen right on board the cars, and they were cooking up fantastic, fantastic food on board. It was really top-notch service at its prime. And we had some good scenery. This is uh, going over the river in Hadley. And this is looking in the other direction at the same location. And train up in North Creek. And a few years later, the hub division of NMRA for a couple of years, they did a, a few different excursions and they did an excursion between Saratoga up to North Creek and back. And so a few of us took that trip, much better weather that day. And here's the 821, now they got her painted up in a, uh, a Delaware and Hudson style livery. And while we were there, a southbound oil train came down. That's actually the, the rear end distributed power. And that train is heading for the Port of Albany. Loaded oil from Western Canada. So I actually did a run by for us. We got up to Hadley and stepped off the train. The, uh, the 821 is shoving. And they had their Delaware and Hudson livery painted former school bus that they loaded us on and took us down to the uh, spot to catch the run by. And here we are at that bridge in Hadley that you saw from the train earlier. And a still shot. It's unfortunate that the power wires were right there in the way, but 
So now we're up at North Creek. We had a bit of a layover. We wandered around and explored. A couple of their units happen to be parked there. Oops. A couple more of the, uh, the former Long Island by levels. I don't know if these are the units that are now on the, the train down at the Cape or not. I know they have something similar down there now. They were running the turntable that day. The Alco shop switcher number five. And one of their former BAR BL2s was parked there as well. I think both of these units are now owned by another company and in storage on the Batten Hill in New York State. This is the Saratoga station. They did a little run by as we, uh, we were at the end of our day. We're gonna slide down to another DNH line. The Leather Stocking Railway Historical Society operates Cooperstown and Charlotte Valley. Off to the right here is the Albany Schenectady area. This is the former DNH line down to Cooperstown Junction. And north from Cooperstown Junction is the Cooperstown and Charlotte Valley. Back in 2007, I was on one of my work trips and I'm driving down Route 7 to go to Binghamton for the day. And lo and behold, I found a couple of GG1s sitting on the side of the road. Uh, one of them is owned by the museum. One of them is supposedly owned or is supposed to be going to the Henry Ford, but it's, it, Supposed to be going to Henry Ford for, I don't know, 15, 20 years almost now. Got the meeting worms uh, coming through on both of them. They also have a couple of former Metro North, former New Haven FL9s. I believe they got the prime mover started on one of them at this point. My wife and I were back in the area a few years ago visiting uh, one of the museums nearby. I caught a northbound CP train coming through. This line is now owned by Norfolk Southern. So you don't see the CP Red running through here anymore. So in 2014, a friend of mine and I went down for their uh, annual rail fan day, which is usually held, held in August. This is the Milford Depot. And although they were supposed to run the, uh, the big D&H hook for, for their display and operations, they had an issue. So instead they had a, a side dump and a Jordan spreader. But we were happy just to get out and ride the train. And what a train it was. You had a Jordan spreader with an S unit behind it, a side dump behind that, uh, four coaches, a passenger flat, and a caboose. And off we went northbound to Cooperstown. I was told that this uh, RPO was 
off its trucks up in Cooperstown for years, and the Historical Society at least got it on a, on a set of shop trucks, got it up off the ground. And they did a run by for us. They, they shoved the, the consist south and, and brought her back through northbound. Milford to Cooperstown, 8.2 miles. Here's a still shot of the run by. All right, what MTA's been waiting for. We're gonna we're make a visit to Utica. Couple of visits. Uh, the first one was uh, one of those Bart Jennings trips where we went up to Cooper and then went up to Lions Falls the next day. Uh, on another trip, a friend of mine, two friends of mine and I went all the way up to Big Moose. They had a lunch trip up there. So we have a number of different shots in and around Utica North here. For those of you who have not been to Utica, it, it is still a great railroad town. You got CSX and Amtrak. You also have the Mohawk Adirondack and Northern, Adirondack Scenic, and the New York Susquehanna and Western, which runs on the former Lackawanna tracks. A lot of rail action, a lot of really neat rail action in Utica. Kind of give you the lay of the land near the station. You got the depot on the left here. And we have the, the crossover, which gets you to the other platform for Amtrak and also to board Adirondack Scenic. Here's a close-up on the, the crossover bridge. This is in 2011 as we were boarding to uh, head up to Carter. Utica is also a huge less than Carlo transfer point for the New York Central. Utica transfer was a very, very busy facility. And this whole area here where all these cars are parked used to be tracks, and this is what's left of the, the Utica transfer buildings. We're looking east from the passenger crossover. Another shot of the former Utica transfer. Kind of give you a lay of the land. We're looking east. Two tracks to the right are CSX. We have Adirondack Scenic in the middle here. And the freight yard is Mohawk, Adirondack, and Northern, which is also a GVT facility. Another shot looking towards the MANN yard. Got a westbound manifest coming through. The Central New York Historical Society owns the tower which is still there. That's at the east end of uh, everything. There's a picture from the, from the train. We're looking west. This is the connecting track from the MAN onto the CSX line. But we're looking into the Susquehanna yard, which is a former DL&W, Erie Lackawanna, 
and the freight house, which we'll see closer up in a moment. So we have Lackawanna Freight House up here, and on the side here it says Erie Lackawanna Railroad Freight House. So we're back over by Tower 30. I think this is 2011. Before we got on the train, uh, MANN was firing up one of their M420s. And now we're going to get ready to. To head north on our excursion. And there's 6076 again, and we have a, a for BC Rail Alco on the point for our trip. And as we're heading out of town, the Susquehanna RDCs uh, were still there at the time, but this was, I believe, after they had finished running their, uh, their little runs between Carousel Mall and Syracuse. We had a lovely gray day. We're in Remsen, as you can see. If you look over to the right under the flag, I believe that's Bill Crawford. Got another shot of him later. They did a, a static parked uh, scene for us to take pictures. Beautiful gray day. I can't remember the name of this gentleman, but uh, he and his wife were on the trip, wonderful folks. And he's a, at the time he was a dispatcher with Canadian National in Chicago. Dave Smetko. Thank you. Now living in Florida. Oh, good for him. Getting paid to stay home, right? <laughs> yep. So we're up in Fendara. And I believe they ran the alcohol around, so it would be on the south for us. And the Jeep was on the north. Took a few shots before we head further north. So we're looking south and now the Jeep is on the point to take us north. And for those of you wondering what the H is, that was mile post, uh, miles from Herkimer. Because back in the day, this line connected down to Herkimer, uh, east of Utica. I believe Remsen was where it, it came off and went that way. There's Bill again on the right, checking something out. So off we went to Carter. That was the uh, furthest north we got that day. And here's what's left of the Carter Depot. And then they, uh, they set up a run by for us. So we all wandered down to the run by spot. If you look all the way to the right, the guy here in the white hat, that's Roger Tobin. We'll have a video coming up momentarily. I think that's the going away shot.
and back south we went. That's right, we stopped in Renson again. It was a little less gray. We had the, uh, the Alco on the other end now. Beautifully restored New York Central wooden caboose. The gentleman brought down his uh, railway express truck. So now we're back in Utica. The MANN unit has cut off and it's going back into its yard. The switch is lined for the Jeep to shove us back to the platform at Utica. And meanwhile, the parade continues with a westbound auto rack. And we're heading up and over, and here comes the westbound, probably manifest with trash up front. It's one of the former Metro North FL9s that they have. We'll see more pictures of the equipment in, in the weather later. Uh, then some of us went over to the Susquehanna side and one of their units was doing some switching in their yard. The, the roadside is right there, so you kind of similar to Olean. You don't have to trespass, and you stand right there and, and watch the action. So now it's the next morning. We're getting ready for our trip to Lions Falls. And some of you might remember 1502 and its former paint job as MBTA 1151. It's an FP-10, which went to, I believe, Met North before it eventually made its way up to Adirondack. So we came through and had a run by at Holland Patton. Beautiful little depot. Now we're up in Bloomville, I believe. This is the former New York Central Freight Depot. And a passenger depot. So we continued north of town where we got off and came down and did a very slow run by and pose for us on this beautiful trestle. Dave, did you climb down the hill for that one? That's quite the jaunt. I think I walked down a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> I don't really remember. <laughs> climbed back up, and then they slowly brought the consis down to reboard us. And here's a shot out the back of the train, looking at the trestle. So now we're up in Lions Falls. Here's the freight depot. And the person on the ground is part of the crew and we are pretty much at end of track, just about approaching end of track in Lions Falls. So then they shoved south, just below the crossing. And then they played musical chairs with the power. If you remember the F unit was leading north, so they pulled up, pulled off the Jeep, put her on the south end, and kept the F unit on the north end. 
and we went back to Bloomville. Had some time there. Beautiful covered bridge in town. Not a rail bridge. former Conrail station sign, looking south at the freight depot in the background. So they had parked the train and we were all walking around and getting shots here and there. Looking at the time, I'm gonna pick it up little bit, try not to rush through too much. So we do a little before and after. The Central New York Historical Society has this lovely New York Central 060 switcher, which is on display just west of the building at the Utica Depot. So we'll show you a few pictures of this. In the background, you see some of the, off the right, some of the equipment at the Children's Museum. So this is a before and after. Here's the after. In July of 2015, if you hadn't, those of you who may not be familiar, you might've heard the story before, some kids pulled the handbrakes on a few covered hopper cars on the Susquehanna line. And these things ripped through town and came and they hit the locomotive and pushed the locomotive into the station building. Fortunately, you know, unfortunately the locomotive took the brunt of it, but it was repaired. But it's fortunate that the locomotive was there to, to take some of that impact energy because if you look on the right, here's what happened to the station building. We were there a couple weeks later. They had put some temporary shoring in place, but that's what the building looked like after those freight cars pushed the locomotive into it. On the left at the top is the before shot. And there was a platform full of passengers awaiting an Amtrak train when this happened. And the platform is really just off the left. Now looking west, at the very left here you can see the locomotive and if you follow the lines of the rails you can see what Susquehanna did. They cut the rails and yanked it way off to the left into this pile of dirt so that this can't happen again. Unfortunately it cuts the connection to the depot but um, for safety reasons this kind of makes sense. a shot of uh, locomotive here on display at the children's museum. So now we're just going to get some rail fan shots in the area. Um, some of the photo angles at Utica aren't necessarily the best but it's a great place to watch stuff come through and the, uh, the Q620 and 621 which were the Messina trains many times would have Canadian national run through power. So you've got a beautiful cowl unit here. The second unit on the train is a former BC rail unit. And this is eastbound. This train will terminate in Selkirk. And here's the uh, Amtrak Empire Service eastbound coming for the station stop at Utica doing their work. So now we're over by the Susquehanna Lackawanna Freight House, and here's an outbound Adirondack Scenic Train. Here's 1502, which we rode behind before, now in their, their new Adirondack livery. Oh, sorry about that. 
And they have a, a couple few of these uh, RS-18s. So now we're gonna have the, the power, jet power line of the Susquehanna. Got a high hood SD40. Get a Jeep. And an F45. I had heard uh, a friend of mine told me these were lease units and they, I think, supposedly cannibalized them and it was a mess and it, then Walter Rich died and it was all held up in court because the leasing company wanted the power back but there wasn't much to get back and it turned into, uh, I guess the lawyers made out of it. And we have a westbound manifest and as that one was finishing its pass, we're gonna swing to the left. Now we have an eastbound manifest coming through. Buick is just a great place to watch trains. And this is at the side of a, a public. This is an M420TR. It's basically a, similar to a C420, but it's, a, it's an end cab version. This is owned by the Mohawk Adirondack and Northern, I believe, or it's owned by GBT in their yard. And we have a westbound stack train passing an eastbound manifest. And we're on a much better day when a westbound stack train's coming by. Alco's peaking out of the yard, way off to the left. Uh, this was 2015 when there was a lot of oil trains running, a lot of run through power. This is a, an eastbound loaded oil train with some BNSF power. Following the CSA. Westbound at Auto Rack. Much nicer day. <laughs> Eastbound Manifest. So we had an Eastbound Manifest with a GP 15 1, which is a nice little bonus. Friend Bill there taking a shot. Here's the lake shore, making it station stop. So we'll take a peek at the Adirondack Scenic Equipment and other items. This B&M buggy was privately owned. It's uh, recently been sold to the New Hope and Ivy Land. They actually repainted it and uh, are running it down there. Here's another shot of that former Metro North FL9. Seen better days. Another FL9 getting a nice paint job. If you look at the plow on the nose of this thing, it tips you off to, uh, this is a former Alaska Railroad F7, hence the large snow plow. Adirondacks S unit. Shot into the MANN yard, various ALCO units in there. Westbound Amtrak. Try to move along here. Here's a westbound, uh, this would be the Q621 heading up north. It's 
So this is the day before we were heading up to Big Moose. So we're doing a little rail fanning in Utica before the trip to Big Moose. I had an evening trip. I think it was like a wine train or something that went out. So now we're on the trip to Big Moose. We're at Thendara looking south. We'll come back and see those switchers uh, on our layover in Thendara in a little bit. I had a southbound uh, local that was running. We had a meet and Fendar in both directions. And we continued up to Big Moose, beautifully restored New York Central Depot, which is now a restaurant. Had a lovely lunch, a little time to walk around, get some pictures. Track is in beautiful shape. Got to jump ahead a little here. Here's some shots of the train. There's our friend of 1502 again with an RS-18. And down we went to Thendara. And they run another local to Thendara. So we had, geez, it must have been almost a two hour layover in Fendara because there was a local that went south and we were waiting for a group that had taken a boat ride on the chain of lakes. They were coming back with a guaranteed connection for our trip back to Utah. At least the weather was beautiful. My friend Tom pulled out his chair and, and sat down there on the platform. Dan, if I could interrupt for just a minute because I know you're getting close to the end. So if folks have, uh who are attending have questions for Dan. Uh, I think the best way to handle them is to just type them in the Q&A uh, box and we will uh, put them to Dan at the end of the program before we close the uh, formal program. So Thank you, Dan. Carry on. We brought you that. So we went inside, the depot was open for us. So we had gone north on the extra that came through at 9.30 up to Big Moose, which is a Thursday run. We came south, and the trip to Otter Lake left at 3, and that's about the time we arrived. And then we had to wait for the Otter Lake train to come back on a single track, and we were out of there at 4.30. So we had about an hour and a half layover at uh, Pandara. So we're looking north from the south yard. Uh, that's actually a former, I think, Louisville and Nashville SW1 that they have painted up. And here we are waiting. Tommy decided to sit in the middle on that one. <laughs> uh, that is a New York Central RS3, privately owned. I believe that one is leaving the property, but there's another one that has either arrived or it will be arriving shortly to replace it. Another original New York Central RS3 on the way. So we're gonna leave Thendara. We're gonna go back to a couple shots in Utica at the end of the day. And thank you. Thank you for allowing me to share. So I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Dave. Whoops, sure. Um, and I'm just gonna ask our uh, panelists here to unmute themselves. Um, so we have one question uh, from uh, Doug Kidd. Uh, can we look forward to sometime seeing what you may have in terms of pictures on the St. Kitts Sugarcane Railroad uh, beyond sure. the background? <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, my background, St. Kitts Railway, that's actually, as I mentioned to you guys, the last train that I've ridden, that I rode. My wife and I were on a cruise in February and uh, it's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous scenic ride. So I'm, I'd be glad to uh, share some of those pictures, probably in one of those uh, Tuesday sessions. Hey, Dan, did you go up to the big fort on the hill as also part of the St. Kitts Railroad? No, that okay. we did not. 
Yeah, because when I was on my cruise, we did the, the fort and then um, onto the railroad. Nice. We did a, a sail and rail. We, we went up by, by sailboat, not sailboat, a boat, and then they, uh, they brought us back on a train. Uh, Dan, Ted uh, Deller, I hope I pronounced it correctly, wants to know if you've gotten into the Rome, New York area. He says there's a beautiful station there, too. There is a beautiful station there. I have actually not been there other than going through with the, the wee hours on the lakeshore in various directions. Um, it, it's on my list to get to. Uh, my friend Bill, it, I had a picture there. He and I travel around it as much as we like taking pictures of trains. We love getting pictures of the, the depots and roundhouses and and other fascinating pieces of railroad history that are out there. Okay, uh, Al Butler um, just responded to a question that had been typed in in the chat earlier about uh, freight on the arcade in Attica. And Al says that they have at least two active customers on, on the ANA. Yes, yep. So. And they run further north than the, the passenger train goes. That's where their customers are, up at the north end. Yeah. Back when you were um, doing, showing the, uh, some of the early shots at Utica, I think I caught a glimpse of the uh, F7-1501, which was on the property when we were there in 2011. And interestingly, that locomotive turned up on our uh, trip to um, <clears throat> Fall River the following uh, year. Hmm. And the curious thing about it was the Cape Cod Central locomotive at the other end of the train was also numbered 1501. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, does, does anybody else have any other questions for Dan uh, typed in or, or from our esteemed panel here? Um, if not, uh, I want to thank everybody for attending um, the, uh, uh, the, the Zoom uh, webinar. And I apologize to those of you who tried to watch it on Facebook. I think I screwed up the Facebook live stream for probably the first half of the program. So uh, we'll figure out what to do about that. So uh, we're going to uh, end the, uh, the official meeting at this point. If you'd like to stick around, those of you who were attendees, we will uh, invite you into the, the main event. And uh, you can stick around for a little bit. Um, and we can just chat and we'll try to uh, get off and get everybody to bed by about 10 o'clock. So um, thank you all for coming. Thank you, David. Awesome program, awesome program.